I've um, purchased these little cameras and there we go and these have got a kind of turret mount on them so that you can move them forward and back and you can turn them around and what I'm going to do is install these on my wing mirrors of my sprinter now you can see the cable comes all the way down here and on the end it's got this little plug and this little plug goes through the hole in the wing mirror into the door and then you connect that little plug to a slightly larger plug which I've got here plugs it into there and then that wire goes through to your screen or your recorder and I'm going to thread this through the door so that we can put this in but first I've got to drill a hole now fortunately when you buy these they come with a small hole saw designed to fit the actual camera diameter so we're going to put that into our drill and drill a hole in the mirror just to show you how this is going to go here's one I fixed in earlier on my passenger side you can see there the camera actually is in a little turret and you can turn it around although it's a bit stiff to turn it around but you can and this moves up and down like so and you can also rotate the camera inside its mounting there's a small screw on the back here to tighten it to stop it moving once you've got it into the right spot but we won't be able to get it into the right spot until we actually install it so that it goes to a screen so that's the one I did earlier and that's turned out quite neat and what that will do hopefully is give me a view all the way down the back of the van in that kind of direction but now we're going to do the driver's side now I've chosen this position to drill through and I've just drilled the hole through the wing mirror unfortunately I forgot to press record on the camera so you didn't see it to start with but I chose this distance because inside the wing mirror you can see there it misses all of the important parts I'll show you how to get the wing mirror off and on shortly okay that's the hole and hopefully this one's going to give me a view down this side of the van so taking the the wire pass it through the hole oops if I just pull it through you can see like so and then this goes into here and those little splines hold it in now mine was a little bit a little bit stiff so I think I might just have to file a little bit to give me a little bit of extra room to get that through and there you can see it's going to go in that hole and these little tabs are going to stop it pulling out again there now that is in these scratches by the way were branches years ago but she's in and I'm not going to lie it's very 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 tight getting it in there but she's in now so now I've just got to feed the wires through now feeding the wires through means that you've got to really take the wing mill off the van which is not as difficult as you might think because you can't get the wire in unless you do take the wing mill off so that's going to be the next trick now to take off the wing mirror there are three bolts one here one here and one behind this little black plastic cover these can be unscrewed with a torx bit I've done those already I've loosened those off and then by using your fingernails or a small screwdriver you can take off the little plastic cover and in there you'll see there's another torx bit I don't know whether you can see that and the light that's there now there's a bit of a risk of this um, little screw being lost and being dropped down into the door if you're not very careful so using a piece of cardboard 
I just slide that in there and then with my Torx bit on a ratchet that can go in there and I can un unscrew it and then use the cardboard to support the weight of the screw to pull it out and there's the screw coming out supported by the cardboard so it shouldn't fall into the door there we go and that is how you stop losing the, the screw now that um, wing mirror can come off but it's supported by a little clip at the moment so we have to um, we have to close the door slightly and then we can have a look what we've got here now the clip is about here so this is going to have to be pulled away from the door and then pushed up so that the clip comes undone which is very difficult to do with one hand so if you don't mind I'll put the camera down for a second now I've taken off the, uh, the glass from the mirror that's a really easy job I'll show you how to do that again in a minute and I'm going to thread the wire from the camera through there to here and then down through there and I put a towel against it there to prevent any kind of scratches to anything like the van so we'll take the little uh, little plug here with the wire uh, don't cut those unless you want those um, reverse parking lines on the camera and we're going to push it up through there and through that hole on the top and there you can see it coming through it's actually really quite easy to do and then just pull the whole wire through there we go and that's fine and that's pretty much all we have to do with the actual wing mirror itself now what we're going to do is um, chase down the wires going into there that's going to be the tricky bit oh yes I've threaded a piece of um, heat shrink cable uh, covering onto that before I connect it up and now I'm going to connect up the other end of the plug which goes on the long wire and before I do that I'm going to put some large heat shrink excuse me I'm going to put some large heat shrink over that always remember to put your heat shrink on before you connect things otherwise you won't be able to get it on and then this little plug has got a little a little ridge in it there and that goes into the plug socket in only one direction in only one way and then that piece of heat shrink can go over that keep it nice and dry and in order to do that just use a little just to sort of seal it off obviously don't leave the flame on there too long there we go that should be sufficient and now thread the piece, bigger piece over the whole lot there that's done that and I'm going to add a little duct tape around it as well just so it's mechanically a little bit more secure the last thing I want it doing is uh, unplugging itself while it's in the bodywork of the van right so the power cords are now duct taped to the main signal cord for the camera and that will go through the hole that pull the power leads through as well and 
and if I just put my screwdriver into there I should be able to find that little lug and pop it out now there you can see one of the little lugs they are actually you can feel them from the back of the ring but they are a little bugger to get out and by turning it around like that I should be able to get at the next one which is in there well oh, you can see that there we go that's out now Whee! now in there I should theoretically be able to find my little tie wrap and there she is and now I can pull that through and that means I can pull it through through the wire through the hole except if it gets stuck <laughs> Just uh, feed the damn thing into the hole and then give it a pull on the other side. Just be gentle with it. Ah, there she is. And she'll come through. Now we can pull all those wires through from the other side and then thread them through the boot into the body of the van and that's actually quite tricky we'll come to that in a second now not only have you got this black wire but you've also got a positive and negative cable and that's actually quite loose and you want to pull both of them through so what i've taken to doing is just duct taping those two together so i can pull them through and there we go now we'll bring all those in and make sure that they're fairly tight on that side all right and that's good so now what we can do is push the door to a little bit and put the wing mirror back onto the side of the van because that bit now is essentially finished what we need to do now is take off the protective towel and put it somewhere it's not going to get lost okay and now we're going to have to put this wing mirror back into the van so that goes in that hole there and then we're going to hook that clip back under there you can see how that goes in well I'm going to have to put the camera down because I have to push on it from the top in order to get it to um, to go in the hole now I'm not going to lie to you it's actually a little tricky to push that in and slide it down so it actually clips on but once it does then the wing mirror is essentially secure back on the van but there is this side of course to squeeze in so we just have to squeeze that just slightly under there before we go any further and that's actually quite easy to get under there because it's fairly loose anyway so that's fine so we're going to have to pass these wires through this plastic clip and up through this boot here we're not going to take off that end of the boot though we're going to use our cable tie technique again um, because that's actually quite tricky that one okay we've got that um we've got that through the plastic clip now now the reason we took this plastic clip off is because you can't get the damn thing in again um you can't get the plastic over the rubber boot over the clip when the clip's in the door so what we need to do now is push that clip back into the rubber boot and then push the whole thing onto the door again i'm gonna have to put the camera down so we're gonna have to take off this piece of plastic and just like the other side underneath up here there is a little torque screw and we can just undo that
don't lose the uh, screw, just put it somewhere safe. And then this should just pop off, like that. <laughs> it's actually quite easy, just lift it from the bottom and just pull it back and it pops off. Now, we should be able to get our hands around here. Well, we could on the other side. Now, it's very difficult to see. Let me get a little bit of light under there. You see that piece of foam up there? You have to pull back that piece of foam with your fingers. Not a problem. And then we should be able to get it where that wire will pass through. Again, using our lovely long tie wraps, we should be able to get that to go through. It's going to be a bit of a fiddle. You have to rotate it a little bit and get it past all the striations of the rubber boot. Okay, now, theoretically, and it is quite tricky, but theoretically you should be able to get your hands under here, pull back this piece of foam, which is wet. Why is that wet? Probably condensation from my dashboard. And now the trick. You have to feel around and move the tie wrap and feel it around until you can feel it on the other side and then grab it and pull it through. And it's not easy. About 20 minutes last time, I've just done it in a few seconds. In retrospect, I'm going to wrap a bit of duct tape around that to make it a little bit smoother to pull it through because I've just tried to do it and it get, keeps getting caught so a bit of duct tape around there will do the job alright that should help pull it through give it another go right. and that has actually got it through I think yay now I've got to gently tease the wire through we don't want it rubbing or cutting on any of the metal work inside the van we've obviously had a few metres of it so it's going to take a little while and there, that's pulled the wires through and they've all come through on this side now as well so I can uh, I can now rearrange these how I want to feed up to the camera control box now what I want to do is I want to put this plastic clip back in after I have actually put the boot back on. So I'm just going to put the boot back on and then slide the whole thing back into the hole. Alright, the boot has got a groove in it for the lip of that to sit into. And now what we need to do is just put the whole thing back onto there. And it is as simple as pushing it on. There we go lovely job. Now what we're going to do now is to put the securing screws on for the wing mirror to bolt it back to the door. Should all start to finger tighten them first because you don't want to cross thread anything. That one's a bit stiff, so I'll let that uh, I'll let the ratchet do that. And then of course the one in there, which we're going to do in a moment. That one's a bit stiffer, probably a bit of rust or something. Uh, I'll have to get the ratchet on that one and then there's that one there now we're going to do a reverse of what we did before we're going to take a piece of cardboard like so and we're going to put that in like so and then we're going to put the screw on the end of the screwdriver and we're going to poke it through the hole so 
that goes on there and then just gently turn it until it bites and once you're sure that it's uh, well bitten and screwed in we can tighten it with the ratchet with little risk of it falling into the door there we go, job done nice and tight and then just push back the little clip right, now what we're going to have to do is get these wires up here, through here up through the door pillar and along the roof to where we're going to have the camera recording box and it's not actually as difficult as you think if I recall um, these should just pull off like so all the way down and when you get to the bottom when you get to the bottom pull it back and then pull upwards because there is a securing ah, which is broken off hmm well I don't have a securing clamp but, uh, but there's a normal little piece, piece of plastic that sticks out to secure it but mine seems to have um, hmm gone now getting these wires from down here up to here isn't as difficult as you think because you can go behind this piece of plastic and just pull them through like so and they just pull behind the rubber like that and then you can just push them around with your finger and then pull the rubber out again give it a tug there we go so they've come through there quite nicely now there we go I'm going to put this plastic cover back on here now there we go now get your screwdriver put the screw back in the hole and screw it back tight Job. now as for putting the glass back on you can see you've got these little clips around the side they don't look very meaty so we're going to have to be careful but these just go back into that hole on that little round thing I think they'll line, line the old mirror up first like so and then just go push and they're back in place let's just hope they don't drop off while I'm driving now all back in all secure and our little camera there ready to go as soon as we get the control box sorted out right I've run the uh, wires up behind that trim it pops off very easily no problem at all up around underneath the headliner pull them through under here by where the little interior light is now getting this thing off so I can mess around with all these wires and things is a little bit tricky just behind here there are three little clips there are three little clips one here one here and one here and these have to be um, pulled this way slightly like so to undo them and take this cover off but inside here I don't know if you can see that so you've got to put a little piece of metal in that hole to push the clip to release the front clip and there's another one on the other side I'm pulling this, now I'm pulling this down you can see the little clip on this side and on this side and the three identical ones at the back and then this whole thing drops down like so so this is the little box that controls the cameras it's got four inputs on the back 
four cameras and one output and a voltage supply input. The voltage supply input is between about 9 and what 38 volts so that should cover all motorhome applications I would have thought. On the other side we've got a camera selector set of switches I'm only putting two in for the moment so I've got number one and number two switched on and number three and four switched off I will of course be adding those later there's a jack socket for the remote control which I'll show you in a second and a card slot for a standard um, small memory card and of course a microphone input socket if you wish to use a microphone. It's actually very small and very light and what I've done is I've connected up a supply um, for each camera okay um, and oh that's come undone I better do that better um, each camera and the plug for the control box. At the present moment in time I'm testing my cameras so I've got a wire just going to my television and another one here and I'm just setting up the cameras and making sure that they're all facing in the right direction. All of this is going to live up there along with this control box. Now the control box comes with a little remote control <coughs> like this for um, programming the control box and selecting different screens and different cameras to see. The only thing I'll say is I was very surprised to find that this does not come with a battery in the remote. So I've had to order one off Amazon, so I can't complete my task today. Okay, so the unit is installed. The two cameras that I'm putting in for the time being, which are both five cameras, are installed and they're working fine. It's recording onto the little card in the box and I've got the remote control so that I can change the screen from one thing to another if I can just uh, figure out how to use it there we go, so that's the, uh, that's the other side and that's kind of like both views both cameras um, and of course I've got two more cameras to install ok, so um, that's actually come up quite nicely that's uh, one of the cameras I haven't installed yet, I think. Yeah, number four, number one, and so on. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I've got to change the date and everything yet, so I've got to go into the menu. I've got to try and decode the instructions, go into the menu and change the date. But uh, generally speaking, I'm very, uh, very pleased about that. Yes. Okay. For those of you that want to know, here are the specifications for the camera recorder. As you can see, it consumes um, about one amp at 12 volts, and it will run all the way up to um, 12 or 24 volts and the cameras themselves here are the details current consumption you can see here is only 150 milliamps which is 0.15 of an amp so all in all uh, a quarter of an amp or so for two cameras uh, about an amp for the actual recorder